Racism is man's gravest threat to man. The maximum of hatred for a minimum of reason. This is said by American rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. Today, racism can hide its face in public. Not only does it exist in the depths of the South, but it lurks right here in our suburban neighborhoods. It's often only those who suffer from it who understand. When we uncover and realize the damage that racism has caused, the better understanding we have on how to fix it. Today, I will share my truth on how unfair treatment has affected my life, how I dealt with it, and how we can all build goodwill by finding beneficial ways to help our community. 88% of King's High School students are white. On the surface, King's appears to be a community of acceptance. However, the truth is, it's an exhausting challenge to exist as a minority. My earliest memories are the racial slurs on the playground. The comments of, you would be so much prettier if you were white. Friends coloring patches of my skin with white chalk and sadly I would refuse to wash it off. After years of torment, satisfying the expectations that others had for me became my desire. Those days were the most painful. I would come home every night taking a flat iron to my hair to strip the identity of curls. I would cut layers of my flesh because the scarred skin underneath was white. I would cry to my mother every night asking her, why did you give birth to such a filthy child? It's your fault my life is this miserable. All she could do was tell her baby girl that she was beautiful. However, it fell on deaf ears. It took me years to get to where I am, and although I have grown, the comments that affected me years ago still exist today. Most recently, the boy behind me in English yanked my braids. He asked me if I own cocoa butter because all black people do. I remember a white friend telling me that it was now acceptable for him to say the N-word, because we're homies, right? I remember the discussion at lunch was how a black man was killed by an officer. The animal deserved it, someone said. All of these instances, however, resist reaction in fear of being labeled as the angry black woman. I know what it means to be a black girl in white suburbia, not in the depths of the South or tight-packed urban cities, but right here in your backyard. This is my story and it's been a struggle to overcome. How do I deal with my struggle, I ask. Should my truth remain the truth? So I put my thoughts into words and I speak. Beyonce says, you have the power to change perception, to show people how to embrace their complications. That's the true beauty and strength that exists inside all of us. There's one thing that I've learned, it's that truth and empowerment are universally beneficial. No matter your audience, you will always inspire someone else. It took me years to embrace who I was and confront my insecurities. It began when I finally started listening to my mother. Her praise of my intelligence and strength taught me that I was more than just the words that were said to me. She was the only woman who knew the extent of my pain and was still proud of me. For that, I admire her. It continued when I educated myself on black culture. The systematic context and social nature that racism exists in allowed me to prepare for ignorance and embrace the truth. The most crucial step, however, was listening to myself. I learned how to tell myself I was beautiful. I learned how to look in the mirror, flip my hair, and walk out the door. I learned how to block self-doubt and fear. We find that when we build goodwill towards ourselves, we build goodwill towards our community. When your child becomes a casualty of ignorance, how do you react? When your friend becomes the victim of hate, how can you protect? In my perception, equality will never be reached. It seems like a fictional destination. However, we find that when we strive for this goal, we build better friendships, we generate a greater goodwill, we end up in a better place than we started. We all have the power to educate ourselves of racism within our community and the ones outside of it. We all have the power to become helpful and supportive to others. Especially in a time when we are so divided, learn to listen to others but speak up for what you believe. There is no better effort than loving thy neighbor. That is how we fight man's greatest threat to man.
fighting the outer truth of racism is far from complete. But it begins by accepting an inner truth, one that was once silenced by fear, one that without the love of a mother and personal strength could have crushed me. It continues by all of us benefiting from self-confidence, pushing for a greater goodwill and understanding our friends. This is my story, but it's our fight for fairness. It's our turn to take responsibility as one. Racism will always be man's greatest threat to man. But with a little bit of compassion, we end up in a better place than we started. Thank you.